and even actually from the standings point of view too, right? If I mean, there's a, di- I, I don't know. It feels like such a big difference. I know all the matches count the same, but the difference between both guys being three three coming out of this, or Chris being kind of up at four two, with Rich falling to two four, just I mean, like a big swing. Chris is in fourth right now, so it is actually a pretty big swing to to do that. Yeah, all the two threes can ju- can tie for a playoff spot going into the last set if Chris loses, right? Anybody who any two three that wins will be tied for the playoffs. Right, and I, I think that uh, when you know whether Chris, if Chris can like kind of jump ahead of the pack, that's just it's going to impact things a lot more than if they both end up three three. It's not clear where that puts everyone, but if it's a four two and a two four, that that delineates things a little better. Totally agree. All right, what do we got with the hands here? Well, Chris Rich, looks like he's on six. <laughs> yeah, and Rich's seven is pretty absurd. Oh my! It's turn one, Jace. And it looks like Rich is on the back play, too. Oh, jeez. This is Rich pretty gross. This, this is not how you want your opponent to open here. <laughs> uh, this could be a quick game. I mean, turn one Jace and then forces... And Chris is... Go, from his hand, we can tell that he only has one turn one play. And it's, first of all, a thorn, which is not incredibly effective against an R- Jace on the board, plus a two lands, basically. And then second, Rich still has the force of will if he even needs it. Like, I don't even know if you force a, a, just a, a thorn of amethyst here. So, yeah, I mean, is the thorny even bad for Rich? He's the one that's got mana. Yeah, I mean, it's worse for Rich than it is for Chris, but it's because Chris is going to play like a workshop. But yeah, yeah, I mean, it's not that bad for him. You know, again, Rich is going to have a land and a mox out, plus potentially another mox if he found one. I guess he didn't. Uh, And with knowing he's going to make a land drop next turn, I mean, that's that's a pretty big, pretty pretty big deal. He's also going to be able to cast Knight's Whisper through Thor. The problem, though, I guess. If you let Thorn resolve, then cast Knight's Whisper through Thorn, you you can't force turn two, which is right. which is a thing. I think I think you force. I mean, it's not like Fire Ice is a particularly valuable card, and it does allow you to Knight's Whisper and do other things. He knows he's got two Knight's Whispers, for example. Yeah, All I, right, I, here's I, the Thorn. I imagine that Rich would want to force this, even though it's not the most threatening yep. thing. Using your force when it costs zero is pretty important. Otherwise, you're you're kind of if you let this resolve, you might get into a hole where you can't win. Whereas with a Jace out, you can't lose. We saw Dave beat Bob through J- with Jace despite having basically no win conditions left in his deck last week. <laughs> Never thought I would see a Bloodstained Mire that can get both basics and vintage. <laughs> <laughs> here we are. That is odd. Yeah. Well, I guess I'm admiring Rich's plan right now. I mean, he's got the, all the basics against stacks. This is the matchup where you want it. Knight's Whisper. Wow, now he's got Yogg Must Will too. Yeah. At the time. I mean, given given that Rich already has the Time Vault, like he's got so many cards that put away the game here. <laughs> and even Tolarian Academy is just that. awesome. Yes, it is. Oh man, I, I actually really like uh, playing Jet Academy and then icing Workshop on upkeep. <laughs> 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 given that Chris Mulligan didn't play any art- Artifact Mana, you could cut him off from playing a spell pretty easily here. He can also go Jet actually, Academy, Time Vault. <laughs> But. Yeah, that is decent too. You know, actually, I might. Yeah, yeah. Th- I think this is probably the best. I, I was considering playing Bloodstained Mire to shuffle, but then you have to either shuffle away Academy, Fire Ice, Yogwill, or Time Vault. <laughs> I actually think you want all those cards. I think your line is better though. I like Ice here because I mean, getting the Time Vault down, whatever. You're not pinched on mana. Right. If he finds if he has access to the key, he's gonna have he's gonna be able to play it all on the same yeah, turn. Yeah, he's, he's gonna have so much mana next turn. You know, you're drawing Bloodstained Mire, so I think Rich is gonna go for it. I think he's gonna go ahead and ice uh, Pakula's workshop here. Hilarious. During your upkeep, tap that. And ice is the best example of a card that shows that versatility is, is all you really need to be a really good card. Like, Ice does two things that are not good enough for Vintage, and this is cards played <laughs> all over the place in Vintage. <laughs> yeah, no, well said. Now, well, this sphere's going to resolve. Chris doing a little bit of work to disrupt Rich now. But whatever, Tolarian Academy makes so much mana. Yeah, I mean, Sphere against uh, an opponent with, like, what is that, seven mana, five, six mana once he plays a land is pretty, pretty depressing at this point. I, I would say that Chris is not optimistic about his chances of winning, nor should he be. Right. No, he's playing it out. Be just because why not? He knows his odds of winning are a single digit number. Single digit. Uh, is that digit zero? <laughs> is I it mean, actual zero? You don't give him a no, I, I do not believe it is literal zero, but I 
I think it is less than one percent, is my guess. It might if be you, less than one percent. If you ran this game a hundred times, I don't know if I don't know if Chris wins one of them from this spot. I mean, look at Chris's or uh, Rich's hand and Chris's hand. Like Rich still has a force of will now and a goblin. Oh yeah, you're right. You're right. It's probably less than one. It doesn't mean we can't enjoy it though. There's definitely <laughs> <laughs> some good plays coming here, and I, I like a. Uh, I like Rich's play of not playing Walder here because it doesn't you don't need it for anything and I think keeping force up is actually what you want to end up doing. And if he plays time vault, he cannot keep force up. I think hard cast force is actually just gonna be good enough here. Yeah, he's left up six. If he taps two for the time vault, he'd only have five, so So Did he not play a land this turn? Is that what happened? He put the bloodstained mire back again? I believe so, yes. I might have actually been tempted to shuffle away Goblin Welder here. Yeah, that's, I was thinking exactly the same thing. I like Bloodstained Mire in play better than Welder in hand. Yeah. I, I think playing Time Vault here is, is needlessly risky. Like, we know that Chris doesn't have a great play. Like, he could play a, you know, a Metamorph on Sphere, I guess. But mm. but Rich doesn't know that. And, and you know, if something like Lodestone Golem Resolve, that could be minorly annoying. Yeah, Chris's hand doesn't have to be terrible. From Rich's perspective, he went turn one Thorn, turn two Sphere... He's got five mana that we that he knows of. Oh wow, Rich is casting Yagwell. Looks like Whoa. It looks like Rich is gonna just just I mean Yagwell in the sphere is kind of, you know, limiting on what you can do, but he doesn't get to replay a Lotus and a land, I guess. Maybe a Night's Whisper as well if he wants to sack the Lotus. Oh, so that's why he put the Bloodstained Mire back. He's getting a right, land if, of his graveyard. If he knows he's playing a land out of his graveyard, that makes sense. Is so he he's Yagwell? got does he get out of this other than the Lotus and a land? Um, he can Night's Whisper. He, he can Bloodstained Mire to Shuffle, then sack Lotus to Night's Whisper. Currently, he cannot hardcast Force of Will, so I think he's going to want to do something here. Well, yeah, I mean, if he casts Night's Whisper, he's got a, sh a decent shot of drawing a blue card and having yeah. mana. Yeah, which I imagine is where you go from here, because otherwise you are just casting a Welder. He's just casting a welder. Uh, one percent might have gotten a little higher. <laughs> I mean, it does give him the ability to to mess around with Chris's artifacts. Like anything scary True. that Chris resolves can turn into a thorn of amethyst. Yeah, but because Rich now doesn't have force up, again, Chris is a huge underdog to win this game. Chris could have drawn something and, and gone like dismember plus good artifact this turn. Mm -hmm. Chris could metamorph the welder and then dismember the welder. No, <laughs> what is that? It accomplishes a welder in play, I guess, which is better than a metamorph. Or he could dismember the welder, then play another sphere. But against an opponent who now has millions of mana, it's not great here. Only 12. Yeah. So it looks like we're getting a metamorph here one way or the other. Yeah, I mean, welder on Chris's side is pretty good. Yeah, it's not bad. Actually... I think it's going to end up being a welder here. Yeah. And then I think I like dismembering. I mean, it's not like you have better targets for it anyway, and you have a mana floating. Oh, no, you don't, actually. Because it used up his Ancient Tomb mana, not his Mishra's Workshop mana. Really? I had this happen to me when I was playing also. I, I tapped a bunch of mana in a Cavern of Souls, and it just used up the other mana and didn't let me use Cavern on uh, on my creature. So but what wow. I think is Magic Online uses... Floating colorless mana with no restrictions before it uses mana with restrictions. Oops. Which That's annoying. Is tough for Chris here, yes. His his options now are to pass. Granted, Rich's Goblin Welder is not doing a lot. I guess actually no, this means that Rich could, since Metamorph's still an artifact, he could weld out Welder for Thorn. I don't think this is gonna cost him the game here at all, because he's gonna <laughs> Rich can cast Dak Faden and steal the Metamorphed Welder if he oh, wants. Oh jeez. <laughs> Jace finds two different copies of Dak Faden. Yeah. One of which is a blue card for Force of Will. The other of which is the greatest thief in the multiverse. Yeah, Chris's chances really are fading at this point. I think now that Rich is going to have double welder out and a Jace. Yeah, I mean, Chris is outnumbered by, you know, planeswalkers, welders, <laughs> mana sources, cards in hand, just about everything. All right. Yeah, Chris is done. Fair enough. 
I would have been done a while ago. <laughs> sure. I, I mean, I'm not saying he should have conceded because he, he had a chance to win, but right. I, uh, I think it's just it's going to be tough for me to play games like that. It's just so depressing. How do you how do you battle that? Well, let's look at the deck lists. Yeah, it sounds like a good plan. Who's up first, Chris? You see the Terra Nova Shops deck. It's been doing well. Yeah. Some East, some East Coast tabletop tournaments, a bunch of man lands, and the usual sort of workshop for powerful threats. Yeah, I don't see Chris drastically changing how this matchup plays post board. I mean, Mm-mm. maybe he, maybe he brings in Batter Skull. I guess if you steal Batter Skull, it's not all that great because you still have a token in play equipped to it. So, like, if Chris taps out, or for, or if Rich taps out, plays Dak, steals Batter Skull, then Chris still gets to attack with it, I think, for at least the one turn. But, yeah, overall, I mean, Chris doesn't have anything that changes what his, like, overall game plan is, whereas Rich, if we want to take a look at Rich's sideboard, Rich has, has got, like, pretty much everything you would want at this point. Like, Rich has double Shattering Speed, four Ingot Chewer, and that, that already is a lot, and a Sabo's Web, which is just free value. Wow. Chris is going to go 3003 with the same yeah. deck. I bet he switches next time around. What do you think? Or he goes, you know, d- you know triple down. Next level. <laughs> just, you know, I mean, this is Yomi, right? You're trying to think one level ahead? It's true. Pretty much. Crazy. Yeah, yeah, so for those of you who don't know the schedule as well as we do, uh, this is the end of week six. You play three matches with each deck. So there's three weeks left in the regular season after tonight, and everybody gets to switch decks before then. Meanwhile, though, as we were talking about uh, during the pregame, there's a Pro Tour next week. So there'll be lots of magic to watch on this channel, including lots with these players. But there's no Vintage Super League on Tuesday of next week. We'll be back two weeks from tonight with... A new set of decks, possibly including cons cards. Definitely the decks that we're going to use to figure out who makes the top four and who finishes last. If people tie after week nine, they play playoffs with their third deck? Uh, no. You choose one deck for all playoff games, including... Okay. I guess it's ambiguous with tiebreaker games. In my head, I assumed that like all the tiebreaker matches counted as playoffs. Yeah, I, I, I think that makes sense to me. I, I would have... Yeah, that's, that's, I mean, that, I mean, my, like, my rules document is like one page long, but that was my that's how I intended it, I guess. And it yeah. seems like the right way to do it. Yeah, I mean, the, I think it would be it's that way. If you know you're playing against someone in a playoff game, you you don't just meta game against just them playing your deck for one week or whatever. Like right, right. It definitely shouldn't be a deck for exactly the playoff game. Yeah, I think it's just there's one deck for all playoffs. Any any postseason matches, you pick one postseason deck and play however many matches you get to play. So. Chris's hand here. Okay, I, was, I thought Rich kept his first hand for a second, and I was going to be very surprised. Yeah. Of tri- triple mox force of will lands. Uh, no Chris's hand, hand. That hand. Yeah, that, looks like Rich is going to four here. His first wow, two yeah. hands were not. His first three hands were not keepable. Oh boy! You definitely keep this. Whoa! All right. Yeah, no, you I can't mean, keep the four card. The four card, no mana. But he had a force of will and two single red artifact removal spells. I think that's better than a three card hand. Wow. Because, I mean, you could force Chris's first lock piece, and if you draw any land that gets a red, you can get basic mountain and have artifact removal. This is how Chris wins, by the way. (laughs) Yeah. Rich, at this point, is actually locked out of playing anything. You know, his other hand, he would have been able to force that that thorn. It's a a decent point. (laughs) But, obviously, if he had not drawn anything, then that wouldn't have worked. Yeah, that mox is not quite coming into play here. Wow, there's going to be a null rod in play before it can come down anyway. Well, just a question I, of whether the null rod or the lodestone comes down first. Yeah, I don't think Chris plays the null rod here. I th- he doesn't I want to turn off his own ruby. Yeah, I think he just Especially wastes he turn. Waste the turn. Academy. Ah, uh, I don't. I don't like wasting academy there. You want to play? You want to get your lodestones down? Well, the thing is, Rich doesn't have any artifacts in play, so academy taps for nothing. Mm-hmm. If Rich plays an artifact, you can wasteland academy in response. I think it's better mm-hmm. to just pass and then hope to draw. You know, hope Rich doesn't do anything and then play a lodestone golem. Chris yeah, potentially put himself in a situation here where he just can't draw another uh, mana source. So now he can actually copy the mox, though. I think it's probably still ah. better to copy the thorn. Like, if you copy the thorn, maybe you don't draw a mana for a while. But if you copy the thorn, Rich just can't play anything. Right. The, any- so I, I, I like that play because it does not make your lodestones any any more expensive, any more, you know, to cast. 
this right, right he now, could still have just there could, he could have a wasteland to richest academy and be casting lodestone golem right here yeah now, now chris is going to cast lodestone golem and end the game here i think yeah yeah this game's over I don't believe there's a card in Magic that saves Rich if he could, you know, set up his hand. I guess maybe if he, maybe like some sort of Dark Depths, Urborg, Thespian stage. Be like, <laughs> I mean, there's a Wasteland in play, so clearly that's not happening either. But maybe maybe that could happen. <laughs> I'm not sure there's enough time. You may die to the Golems before you can even make your 2020 indestructible. Yeah. Well, these games have been equally close here. Yeah. <laughs> So, I did not think we could have a bigger blowout than the, than the game one blowout, but yet... Well, this is a normal stacks game. Like, I mean, Rich did mul multi three, so we have to remember right. that. But, <laughs> I know, I'm counting that in my blowout. But my let's say Rich didn't. Big blowout is. There's a lot of hands that turn one thorn, turn two wasteland, turn three thorn, turn four lodestone would have would have beaten. So, I think that uh, you know Chris had a pretty good hand even against one of Rich's more normal draws. Agreed. Yeah, it's almost like he wasted the good hand against three cards. Well, he wasted the academy, but also the hand. <laughs> fine, fine. I guess so, Rich is just playing this out in case he gets to see a relevant sideboard card. Yeah, maybe he sees that Chris brought in. I, I don't even. I can't even think of a card that Chris would have like a batter skull or something. But he couldn't even cast that. So. All right. Well, Rich is going to get get to be on the play game three, which obviously is bigger in this matchup than in most. I mean, the play draw is pretty big in Vintage regardless, but between two blue decks, there are a lot of games that the play draw actually was nece not necessarily even better to be on the play. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it matters a lot in any matchup that involves shops. It matters a lot in any matchup that involves combo. But I mean, most of the decks are the kind of blue decks where, you know, card versus the time. Yeah, you choose play, but... Yeah, you certainly choose play, but especially now that Mental Misstep is a card. Oh, yeah. You end up in, with games where, like, you know, a Mental Misstep bore happens in the, on turn one. Someone casts another spell, gets forced, and then both players have three cards in their hand and aren't making land drops anyway. So their being on the play was not a huge edge. All true. So you like Rich in this game just because he's on the play? Uh, because he's on the play, <laughs> Andy has... Four Dak Fadens and fifteen artifact removal spells. All right, fine. <laughs> the, those, just those things, and basic Chris. three basic lands plus Bloodstained Myers to go get them. <laughs> Actually, Chris has somehow sorry, become the beat upon. Chris has somehow become the the beat upon underdog here, despite three owing the first set. Yeah, it's a it's a nine round tournament. It's not a three round tournament. I mean, <laughs> I I think that uh, Chris's deck choice was excellent for the first one and. He then played against three people who just assumed he was going to play something similar to what he played week one and had a decks that were much more biased against it than they were the first time. It's funny. I know he got partially part of the reason that he wound up running back the deck is that, you know, he, he went to a, a big weekend event the right before the decks were due. So it's almost like he's one of the guys not going to the pro tour this time. He may be one who actually gets to test for the last vintage super league set while, you know, the six of us are in Hawaii, not thinking about vintage, which is unlucky, it gets yeah. him a little bit of an edge in the last set. Yeah, I mean, I I think that by preparing, you will get, you know, you'll make a better deck. It's just true of all magic tournaments. So. How they work. I mean, I did a, a decent amount of theory crafting before this set. I did not test specific matchups, but I played this deck in a couple daily events and online. Yeah. And then uh, I, I made this like, you know, matrix of what decks I thought my opponents were going to play. So that's kind of how I ended up here. So. Looks like we're heading back to the game here. Yep. Let's see game three. What we got for hands? Nice. Chris has a lot of good stuff and a couple of workshops. Chris's hand is great. Rich's hand is decidedly not. I don't no, think it's no. necessarily a mulligan because he gets to play turn one. Yeah, you get to play turn one Night's Whisper and then turn two you can vamp for maybe basic mountain to cast Ingot Chewer. Right. It's a shame he drew Battlesphere, because not only is it a brick in your hand, it means that his out of just turn two Tinker right. is just not live anymore. Now, what exactly does Sabo's Web do? It's a cantrip artifact for two, and then lands that tap for that have abilities that are not mana abilities uh, don't untap, or activated abilities that aren't mana abilities. Basically, it makes it so um, Mutavolt and uh, Wasteland, Wasteland do not untap. Wow, he leads turn one Zabo's Web instead of casting Night's Whisper. Hmm. That's pretty ambitious for two reasons. One, 
You want to draw an extra card because you don't necessarily make a land drop turn two this way. But he hit. Two. He Volcanic Island. Yeah, he did. He did hit, which was good for him. But two, it also means that uh, Chris isn't going to now like play Mutavault into something if that was yeah. his play. You're not going to catch and, any lands. And actually, three Sabo's Web gets cast under Lodestone Golem easily. So yeah, I I don't I don't know. I don't know if I would have led with that, or rather, I know that I would not have led with that. You would have led Night's Whisper, which is what I would have done too, I think. Yeah, I don't see a compelling reason to play the Sabo's Web there. I mean, you even might run into the problem where you get strip mined and you don't have a swamp in play anymore. Mm. So. Chris leading with Wastelanded, but still. It's true. Chris leading with the, the actual sphere. All I right, wonder... so here, here goes Upkeep Vampiric Tutor for two mana because of the sphere. What does he get? Oh, is he getting a Lotus? And is, it, is his plan to like just play a Lotus and then hope to then play a... Battlesphere? Battlesphere, Hardcast? Oh, he's just getting a Wasteland, I see. Oh, wow. He's total man in denial. He's like, I've got a Zabo's web. I'm going to Wasteland your workshop. But Chris has a second workshop. Yeah, that that's kind of unlucky for Rich that Chris just has a double workshop draw. So now Chris can... He can play either Thorn or Sculpting Steel or Frexian Revoker. He's actually got a lot of options. Yeah, he does. Interesting. Mm -hmm. yeah, Rich has definitely gone for the Mana Denial. He figures Sabo's Web means the only lands in Chris's entire deck that untap are the Workshops, right? Yeah. It locks down everything else? Ancient Tomb also. Oh, Ancient Tomb untaps. It's, it basically has reduced Chris down to Workshops and Ancient Tombs. Yeah. I actually don't mind playing Revoker here because... It basically does the same thing as a sphere. It shuts off Mox Pearl. Right. But it actually puts a clock. A yeah, clock no, down. I like Revoker here. I actually think Rich is not in incredible shape here. Oh, no, Rich is in trouble. Chris's draw is quite good here. Well, I mean, that's an Ancient Tomb in his hand, right? Which continues to untap. So yeah. he can cast Lodestone Golem through his own sphere next turn. Rich yeah, is in so trouble. Rich is going to get to Ingot Chewer, what I assume is the sphere, since that affects all your spells. So I guess if you're only casting one spell a turn, Killing Revoker is the same. Almost well, the same. one advantage to Killing Sphere is it turns off Metamorph and Sculpting Steel, because Double Revoker doesn't actually do anything. Ah, sure. So it's actually kind of a, a tough choice. Do you do you want to take extra two? I like Killing the Sphere here. That's I think that's what I would lean to, but and I think it is reason. valid. It's also valid that Dak Faden stealing Revoker is a lot better. <laughs> like it does. Uh. So Chris is going to get to play a Lodestone Golem this turn, which yes, means that... Rich can still cast Night's Whisper next turn, but, I mean, Lodestone Golem is going to be good. He could also cast... <laughs> uh, Darksteel? Juggernaut, but I don't think that's what's going to happen. <laughs> no, I think he lead Lodestone first. Yeah. Is he thinking about Sculpting Steel Thorn? Yeah, he might He might want to make himself less vulnerable to Force of Will, or play around a second artifact removal spell by leading with a cheaper, less impactful artifact. The problem is you can't play Thorn uh, Sculpting Steel. Because, oh, right, because Thorn makes the Sculpting Steel co cost yeah. more. He's if also could, not vulnerable to Force of Will right now, because you can't tap the Pearl, and it costs... Oh, it doesn't cost one. Force of Will is just free. My bad. Yeah, yeah, he's leading with Thorn so that he can't get Force of Will. Yeah, so then you're forced into playing Revoker and naming, like, I would assume Black Lotus is just the safest name, especially since Chris isn't playing one, so Chris gets to name that yeah. without fear. That's Larry's. all part of the plan. <laughs> but also named Dak Faden. He named Dak Faden. Oh. Yeah, actually, Dak Faden is better. Never mind. That That's a way better name. You, you know that Rich has four of them in his deck. Exactly. And it's really good against you. So, so this is a less powerful play, but Chris is doing it to play around Force of Will, and I think that makes sense. I mean, mm -hmm. it also plays around Ingot Chewer a little bit. So Chris hasn't had an opportunity to use a Wasteland, so I imagine Rich is just going to get a basic island here and cast Knight's Whisper. Yep. His hand is not great right now. Let's see if Knight's Whisper does a lot. Uh, Academy is pretty good. Yeah, it's a lot of land in his hand. It just doesn't have any threats. Yeah, Can he this get puts, to Battle Sphere. This puts Rich up to five mana next turn, so he's still a ways away from casting Battle Sphere. But it, Battle Sphere gets around both Thorn and Lodestone Golem, so I think. I he mean, I think Rich is a pretty good creature. Guy. I would be surprised if Chris did not play Lodestone Golem here. It just makes by far. Oh, yeah. Sense. You can't even get forced because of the thorn. Yeah, this is the it way he do it. It actually just puts straight leaf on the board. Rich has to peel a board impacting spell or he's just dead. That is nine power. Yeah, Chris gets to attack for Xaxes next turn. Can Rich Shea top deck an artifact removal spell is what he really needs. Boom. <laughs> he wow. top decked an artifact removal spell. That he even counts. has enough to exactly play it he can play a shattering spree for two killing lodestone golem and 
I guess probably the Revoker that is on naming Mox Pearl. Yeah, that's where I'm at too. I mean, you could get the Thorn, but the Revoker's damage is adding up, and getting your Pearl back is almost the same as getting rid of the Thorn. Yeah, I like, I like getting that, especially since getting rid of the Thorn doesn't actually stop Misha's uh, or uh, Mere Battle Sphere, whereas getting the Pearl back does contribute to it. Rich can cast a Battle Sphere next turn. It really? looks like. Yeah, he gets to play Academy now that his if it, assuming his pearls now active. Uh huh. Academy tap for two Battle Sphere. That was the best card in Rich's deck probably. Wow, he top decks Shattering Spree, with lethal damage staring at him in one draw phase. Well, you always start out targeting Lodestone Golem, right? And then, yeah. then you get to switch targets. Is how this is supposed to work. It looks like the he's it's still waiting for him to change copies. Is what it says. So it looks like he's deciding whether he wants to kill the Witch Revoker or the or the Thorn. Yeah, the mechanics of this is it replicates it targeting the same top same target, but then gives you the ability to change targets. Which, yeah, he he wants his Mox Pearl back, and he wants Chris to be down to two damage a turn, two two attackers, two attacking power per turn. I don't think that. Uh, How about another Lodestone Golem? Well, that was actually a kind of unlucky draw for Chris. Had Chris not drawn that, I think he would have played. Uh, like a no rod or a, or potentially and or maybe copied the revoker instead he's going to play lodestone golem because i think that makes the most sense because it puts lethal on the battle board. Sphere. and then now the battle sphere is going to resolve here so yeah i i still think that uh the lodestone golem is what you want to play not knowing that there's a cat boat, the one of Academy and I the mean, one of Battle Sphere. Yeah, I, I, I don't see how you get that read here. So, I mean, what are your other plays? You can play a Dark Steel Juggernaut. Yeah. It's actually not unreasonable now that now that I'm looking at it. So the reason you'd want to play Dark Steel Juggernaut, as funny as that sounds, uh, Rich already has access to five mana now. There aren't that many spells Lodestone Golem prevents. And Darkstar Juggernaut is better against Ingot Chewer or Shattering Spree or anything like that. You you even have Dak Fade and Protection out already. So I don't think it's completely unreasonable to play Darkstar Juggernaut, especially since next turn you get to like copy it or play a Lodestone Golem. Though if Chris is able to save his sculpting steel, he can actually cast his own Battle Sphere. Oh my. Then, then the game is not necessarily over. Battle Sphere oh plus Darkstar Juggernaut equals a giant Darkstar Juggernaut. <laughs> yes, sir. Someone said, unless he's ghosting. No one's ghosting in the Vintage League. I would be <clears throat> incredibly shocked if there's anything like that happening. I mean, we're yeah. here because it's fun. It's not fun to, to essentially cheat. Wow. Yeah. He goes low, Stone Golem. Yeah, I, I, I like that play. I mean, I, I think it's better than playing the Darkstar Juggernaut. So, and Emerald. Yeah. Rich gets to play it, I think, because it's free, it's right? It's free, yeah, yeah because the Academy it, gives you the mana back that you had to invest in the Thorn. It actually even adds a mana. Bam. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Here's the battle ball, followed by... But Rich has no cards in hand. Rich, granted, has a ton of spells he can top deck because he's got all his mana out now. But R Chris is going to get to copy the battle sphere. And it's actually pretty close to lethal just by attacking and dealing four. <laughs> and then Chris is going to get to play a Darksteel Juggernaut. So, I mean, this game is not over despite Rich drawing you know, a pretty incredible draw and then playing a battle sphere. Yeah, I thought the game was over in Chris's favor. But, I mean, Rich top decked very well to turn it into an interesting game. But now, okay, so what is Chris's line? He can't attack into the four seven. No, no, he just I, sculpting I, steals. Yeah, and I guess you can play the mocks too, right? Just yeah, the null rod doesn't do anything here because your opponent has it has more mana than you. Yeah, I, I don't think you play null rod. So it's just sculpting steel or dark steel juggernaut. Yeah, it's. Not unreasonable to play Dark Steel Juggernaut, but I like playing Sculpting Steel because, first of all, Rich can't counter it this turn, and that one I think is more important to resolve. And then, second of all, uh, if you attack with with Battle Sphere and tap all your tap all the Mirror Tokens, mm -hmm. then you end up uh, forcing Rich to like block with his own Battle Sphere plus three of the tokens to kill it because two hits from it is just lethal. So yeah, Battle Sphere yep. sounds like a great play here. So yep, I think Chris, Chris is actually still ahead. I mean, Rich is going to get at least two draw steps, which is a pretty big deal in a blue deck that has all its mana, but, you know, Dak Faden doesn't do anything right now. Uh, there are a lot of cards you could draw that do not do much. Even counter spells are not all that spectacular. So, I actually think, despite all this, Chris is still in a pretty good position. 
Yeah, he's winning on board. He he needs to make it make his own battle sphere, but Rich cannot afford to attack, and Chris can. Yeah, I don't I don't see Rich getting a profitable attack in here unless he draws like if he draws a time walk, it gets kind of interesting. But even then, yeah. Chris can like block with like a lodestone golem, yeah. maybe, and like two tokens and keep a battle sphere. I don't know. It is it is close. Sobel's Web not shutting down Academy or Misha's Workshop or Ancient Tomb. It's just there for the Muta Vaults and Misha's Factories. And I guess Wasteland, if that you can if you snipe a Wasteland, that seems kind of unlikely though. And there's the battle ball. Yeah, I want one of those too. That looks like fun. Yeah. This game is actually just balling out of control. Like, look at this. Like, there's two mere battle spheres in play. <laughs> it's pretty awesome. Like, what, what are we playing here? We're gonna we're gonna look at you know. A de you know, the next game have Consecrated Sphinx versus, you know, Bizarre of Baghdad when you, we have <laughs> Ephro and Martel play. You and Dave is going to be whether it's Mind Break Trap can stop Gristlebrand. So. Yeah, no. <laughs> all right, it's kind of up to Rich. He's got a couple of draw steps here with all his mana, which is kind of a minor victory against, you know, workshops already, right? Mm -hmm. Like, if you're able to cast all your spells, usually you're ahead. The, the, the difference here is that uh, Chris's are still threatening to kill you through your own battle sphere. Rainstorm. Oh. Rainstorm cannot be a bad draw. No, sir. With a fetch lane, too. All right. And this, is how, this is how Rich wins. I mean, the sequence of draws is, <laughs> is what he needs. That's that's one of the cool things about Vintage. You're rarely in a situation, especially with a blue deck, where the right sequence of draws does not win you the game. I mean, given that you have cards like Ancestral Recall, Brainstorm, Yawgmoth's Will, Shattering Spree, Demonic Tutor, like you often have pretty good shots. Time walk. Oh, that's really interesting. So, I mean, Rich is definitely putting back Volcanic. The question is, do you put back Fire Ice or Scalding Tarn? You have Time Walk. So if you attack and make your Battle Sphere Giant... I feel like getting a fresh draw phase has a lot of value. Yeah, I mean, Rich could, I guess, put back Volcanic Tarn, Cycle Ice, and then Time Walk after cracking Scalding Tarn. So Rich is going to see a new card pretty much no matter what here. Uh, the question is, does he want to make an attack here? Because the attacking battle sphere has the advantage; it kills the other one. Mm -hmm. And Rich, ice I mean, is pretty relevant too, right? He can get two tokens. He can either fire two of the tokens, or he can ice to tap a potential blocker. Fire I, ice has a shocking number of potential applications on this board. Yeah, yeah, I, I would lean towards using ice on something because i think you want the draw step more than you want to kill the two tokens well but you don't get a fresh draw step unless you're cracking well, you, scalding tarn you put scalding tarn back and then you ice to draw it and then you crack it then you play time walk like no matter what you do here you see one one new card unfortunately you can't use fire ice time walk and scalding tarn to see two new cards because you have to keep the scalding tarn and then your two blue cards yeah i mean you can put back the fire ice but it's free to cycle it and then draw tarn i think so this is actually a really tough play, because if you attack and make the Battle Sphere an 8-7, you know, drop, drops Chris to 8, but Chris has to think Time Walk's coming, right? Like, mm -hmm. why else would Rich make that attack? Yeah, Rich is only attacking if he has Time Walk in his hand, so Chris will Chris will put him on Time Walk correctly. Yeah, the only other thing you could put him on is maybe having Ingot Chewer or a second Shattering Spree. But if you had a Shattering Spree, I think... You would do it pre-combat. You would do it pre-combat. Ingot Chewer, you might do it post-combat, depending on how Chris blocks... But even then, I, the first card I would jump to is Time Walk. Because if you're going to tap all your blockers, you're doing that. So, uh, yeah, I don't think... Chris basically either... He's got basically two options. One is chump with one token. The other is make a make a block on the Battle Sphere that kills it, and you lose a bunch of stuff in response. Mm -hmm. uh, I would be inclined to just chump with a token. I really don't think you want the Revoker to die, because I think the Revoker is actually pretty valuable to your game plan. Shutting down Dak Faden, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you don't know if Rich has had one, because he hasn't really had a great opportunity to play it. Alright, well, Rich put back the Tarn. Now he's trying to figure out what to do with the Fire Ice. Yeah. The question is, do you do you care if Chris blocks with Lodestone Golem or Mere Battle Sphere? The card the you do not want him to block with is probably Lodestone Golem, because you don't care if he blocks a Battle Sphere, because you're happy killing his. But the problem is, if actually, if you know, even if Rich is time walking, if he attacks with that Battle Sphere and it dies, yeah. it doesn't. Rich should block to kill it. 
Yeah, Chris, he's happy to trade both battle spheres because he's winning with the off, battle spheres and island. Yeah, trading off battle spheres leaves Rich at the Rich at the mercy of his draw step here. Rich might want to just ice time walk and just draw his card. I mean, he's not winning that way, but he at least gets to see some new cards. Ice is the lodestone golem. Well, if you're going to attack, that's the one you don't want Chris blocking with. You'd rather him blocking and losing his battle sphere. Okay. But I don't think Rich is attacking here. I mean, you don't do all this. You don't cast time walk pre combat if you're attacking. And you don't sack a sack Scalding Torn there either. So it looks like Rich is attacking. Okay, so he did not cast the Time Walk, because there's no reason to show yeah. Chris that information. Yeah, he cycled the ice because he had floating mana from the academy. Yeah. Which I actually don't... I mean, he wanted to tap the Lodestone Golem first anyway. Uh, so if you're Chris and you trade, you can trade off Battle Sphere and three tokens. Yeah. I mean, you can't, you can't take it. You have to at least block. Yes. The question is whether you want to trade Battle Sphere and three tokens. I think well, you Battle do. Sphere and one token. Yeah, I guess it actually ends up being Battle Sphere one token. I think you have to, just because Rich, first of all, is going to cast Time Walk. You're like, you know, probably high nineties sure of that. And second of all, Rich has ingot chewers and cards that can destroy your Battle Sphere. Trading yep. off is actually just good for you because you have a Dark Steel Juggernaut Agreed. and you've locked down Dak Faden. Rich is totally actually agree. kind of locked out by that. He needs to to kill Revoker and then kill Dak Faden. <laughs> Or then play Dak Faden to get rid of the Dark Star Juggernaut. Chris goes with the chump block. Yeah, I mean... He could get blown out by fire, by the way, if he had a gun the gang block. Rich has two fire ices, but he used one pre-combat. Right. All true. I'm just saying, he would get totally blown out by fire if he gang blocked. So this is another big draw step for Rich. And... Dak Faden. Not a card you want to play. You definitely want Chris to maybe trade off that Revoker first. Though I think... Right. Like, like I said, if I'm Chris, I do, I'm do. i not letting that Revoker go anywhere. Even against a Rich with no cards in hand, it just turns <laughs> off four of Rich's best cards. Yes. And also, as Rich has clearly demonstrated, having no cards in hand is ne definitely no barrier to him having good cards in his hand <laughs> <laughs> on his main phase. <laughs> True. Gotta give Chris props for the correct name with Revoker way back when. Oh yeah, that was that was a great play. Uh, and now what? Rich has to just say go? He can't really attack here. So this actually worked out pretty well for Chris, given that Rich did not draw something that stops uh, the Battle Sphere from attacking. Right. So, now, what is Chris... Chris can attack with his Battle Sphere. He can attack with his Battle Sphere. I think you just attack with just the Battle Sphere, make it, and make it do the full amount. Because you could actually cast Dark Star Juggernaut first to see if it resolves. Mm. That is kind of relevant. That's not um, the Ancient Tomb... Like, you have to tap Ancient Tomb to do that, though. That's starting to get relevant. Chris is actually down to 8. I mean, not much difference between eight and six, I guess. Yeah, four is very different, but right. yeah. So I think, I think I just play Dark Star Juggernaut. If it doesn't resolve, that that changes how I attack. But if it resolves, I attack with a seven seven Battle Sphere, which drops Rich to three, forces him to block. Because even if Rich just chump blocks and has four attackers, you get him next or, turn with the Battle yeah, Sphere. Yeah, you've got enough blockers. Or if he shoots you with Battle Sphere, it means his tokens aren't attacking, and you can easily block Battle Sphere with Dark Star Juggernaut. You know, you you actually might make this attack even if. Darkster Juggernaut resolves. So actually, I think attacking first might actually be better. Or like even if even if you knew Rich's the card in Rich's hand was like a Force of Will, mm -hmm. this attack actually I still think works. So I think you're just going to make the attack to give Rich less information. You you do you do need to tap all the tokens though. Yeah, you want half his life total here, no matter what. Yeah, because this makes first of all it makes it so your Battle Sphere kills Rich's. Second of all, it makes it so your Battle Sphere is lethal next turn. Though I don't think it's surviving the turn here because I think Rich has to is pretty much priced into blocking. Yep. I've never seen so many battles for activations because or uh, triggers, <laughs> I suppose. Doesn't usually take that many. Well, yeah. I mean, first of all, it's rare to see it in play because it's not a super commonly played card. I mean, I've played it in vintage before; it's a decent card. Yeah. But it's not all over the place. And then it's rare that yeah you need more than one attack, and it's rare that there's two of them, and it's rare that multiple attacks on either side does not end the game. <laughs> so all this true. is a. I would say this is an outlier of a game, but like all the vintage games that last over 10 turns, I think, tend to have weird stuff go on because that's why they're lasting so long. Right. Yeah, for people who maybe don't know why it's a battle sphere, I mean, Blightstow Colossus is the obvious thing to go get with your Tinker. It can win the game in one attack. You know, it tramples, it's indestructible. But Jace the Mind Sculptor is a card that shows up in a lot of decks. So the fact that Jace can bounce one creature while you tinkle for a battle sphere, what does Jace do? Against Battle Sphere, he bounces the four seven and then dies to the tokens. So it's yeah, because so many people play Jace that Rich favors the Battle Sphere as his key tinker target. Yeah, and I think 
uh, I mean, Rich is also playing four Dak Fadens in his list, so he's got to you know keep in mind other people might have that card too. It's the exact same argument that you just made about Jason applies yeah. to Dak Faden, even more so actually. <laughs> uh, and then uh, also Goblin Welder Battle Sphere is a combo. You can just keep welding your Battle Sphere back and forth to to go off and get a bunch of tokens. Yeah, another another reason it's better in his list. If you're rich, I think you just block with Battlesphere yeah. and three tokens. Agreed. You trade off battle spheres, and then you're not dead next turn, right? Yeah, you've got enough blockers. Chris has the mm-hmm. option of killing all four tokens also, which actually puts Rich dead on board. So it might actually... It's riskier in the sense that a battle sphere is generally better than four tokens, but if you're Chris, I don't think it's terrible to kill the tokens. Dark Steel Juggernaut does want to, to, to you know, smash into battle sphere more than it wants to smash into tokens, so... I think it's quite reasonable for Chris just to kill all four mirror tokens. Well, Rich has to block first. Goes yes. With the jump. Oh, goes with. I would be so. Oh, yeah, I guess you only need to kill three tokens because actually Rich only has to block with three. Yeah. So at that point, I think it's probably safer to kill the battle sphere. Less goes wrong. You don't win immediately, but right. less goes wrong. Is that worth it? How dangerous do you think Rich's draw steps are with millions of mana? You know, even though Rich is... I mean, Rich still has the like, Yawgmoth's will to draw something like that, but even though Rich is playing a blue deck, he's not playing a combo deck. He, there aren't that many cards Rich's deck can draw to win in one turn. Yeah, well, it looks like the Battle Sphere is at the front of the... Yeah, I, I think that's the safer play. I mean... Agreed. And here we go. Dark Steel Juggernaut. And Ri- Chris really wishes he could play Chalice for one here, but unfortunately, that is not an option. Sabo's uh, web. The well, you get, another, you get another bite at the apple here. Yeah. And Rich is not dead this turn. Is that accurate? Yeah, Rich goes to one this turn after blocking everything. And that does lose Chris the 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 Revoker if he chooses oh, to make geez. that attack. And what do we got? Hmm. Bloodstained Mire. Not, not what Rich is looking for. I think he's got to just pass the turn here and go to one and hope. And even if Kree plays a Dak Faden after that, it's not going to be able to steal the game. Like It can steal one creature, but... They're all going to be tapped. I mean, Chris is attacking with everything. Alternately, Chris can just not attack with the Revoker, which is also reasonable. I don't think you attack with the Revoker. There's no reason to get him to one. Uh, yeah, He's not a ton such. of a reason. What does that get you? It means he can't crack Bloodstained Mire, which doesn't matter because he doesn't know the top card of his library. Right. It means he can't cast Force Will. He already couldn't cast Night's Whisper. Those aren't relevant. You're not losing to Dak Faden, but I guess there's no reason to risk it. Yeah, Wasey Academy. That makes sense. Yeah, might as well. None of this crazy, like, Yawgmoth's Will. It takes a lot of Yawgmoth's Will turns out of play. Well, not... Uh, not really because Chris... Well, the or, Academy just comes back re- out of the graveyard. Replay the Yawgmoth's Will. It does take away a lot of other outs, though. You are right. Like, I mean, it means that Rich is less likely to be able to chain draw, draw spells or anything like that. So what happens if you don't attack with the Revoker? You still force block on two of the tokens. You actually might leave some tokens back if you're lethal next turn anyway. Right. That's what he's lo- it's what he's lining up. He's like, okay, if I do yeah. this attack, he has to block both the big guys. So two tokens are dead. Then what do I want to want to attack with? Well, he could have two tokens left. Yeah. Well, I think- attacking with that other token would have forced a block on a token. I think Chris is maybe worried about like some kind of time walk recursion. Yeah. Or maybe even like Rich going to one and attacking him back and like casting like fire ice or so, something. I don't know. I don't know what yeah, exactly. This is perfectly reasonable to me. Yeah. You can't kill him. I don't know. I might send one more token in there because forcing the token trade makes it so next turn you're in slightly better shape. Mm-hmm. But you're in fine shape next turn anyway. He's yeah. either going to one or trading tokens as is. Yeah, Rich is drawing pretty slim here. What does another shattering spree do? Eh, it does a lot. Does if you're rich, Juggernaut's I, indestructible, though. Yeah, it is, but Shattering Spree lets you kill the Revoker and like the Lodestone Golem, and then Dak Fade into Dark Steel Juggernaut. I sure. actually think if I'm rich, I block the other t- one of the unblocked tokens, so you can sack Bloodstained Mire because Shattering Spree is your best draw anyway. I think, or at least among them, Yawgmoth will also pretty good. So you're and then Shat- use a token in order to be able to go get red mana for an extra right. Shattering Spree. Yeah, I think that's where he's at right now. Yeah, this is this is this is an interesting game. I, oh yeah, 
I'm yeah. not saying that Dark Steel Juggernaut couldn't have been a different five mana artifact and done well, but it's it's doing its job here. I mean, it's, Dark Steel <laughs> Juggernaut is doing work. Absolutely true. It's indestructible and it's large. I don't know. I mean, that Chris just wanted a creature this game, and that's what it was. Sculpting still, of course, being the real MVP by copying Mere Battle Sphere. Sure. So, Rich, this is a pretty tough decision. It's also brutal here because uh, Rich has to make this decision to maximize his outs, but he knows he's incredibly unlikely to win. But making tough decisions when you're unlikely to win is part of how you win tough games. <laughs> it's just yeah. tough, like, thinking so much, knowing you're still just, like, 90% just to lose on your draw step. <laughs> so, Rich, very deep in the tank, but he wants to block with one additional token. I... I Again, I would lean towards doing so. I think it also makes your Yawgmoth's will a little better. Anything that make basically by blocking a token, you get to sack Bloodstained Mire, and I don't think Rich is winning a game where he gets to like chump the two big guys next turn anyway, because he's at one and has facing four other attackers. Like he needs something pretty insane. Uh, Pyroclasm is not an out in any way, unfortunately, because <laughs> it leaves a uh, Darkster Juggernaut and a Lodestone Golem. And then he can play Dak Faden, but he doesn't untap the artifact and. Uh, I guess if he blocks, so he goes to like multiple life. No, but Darkstar Juggernaut and and Lodestone Golem do so much damage. Chris does get to cast uh, Null Rod and potentially a Chalice. Yeah, I guess he has enough mana if he taps all his lands. That is tough, though. That's going to four from Ancient Tomb. How risky is that? Yeah, it doesn't sound like fun. I don't know if it matters though. It's not like you, you know Rich doesn't have like lava axe, you know, in his deck. Oh, he's gonna kill the lodestone golem. Well that's the other block. I see. I didn't uh -huh. I, I guess I I guess I did not uh think of that because I, I just didn't anticipate you know the triple not block. Attacking the token? Yeah, because I I all my math had factored in the token attacking. That is sure. a disadvantage to not attacking with the token, but Yeah, it gave Rich the option to triple block lodestone and go to one, which is what he's done. And now, now he's just no like rod. a and not right, playing so she said five man he draws ingot sure would not have been great, great earlier but he can blow up uh like a revoker or yep. he can blow up a mirror token but <sighs> the mirror tokens are going to finish him off not good enough dark steel juggernaut's going to finish him off you can't ingot you or dark steel juggernaut you can block the juggernaut it's the token that's going to finish him off i'm not giving dark steel juggernaut the win here <laughs> <laughs> Can you even cast the thing? Isn't there a... I guess you can cast it through Thorn. You're Actually, right. You can... Yeah. Ephra of Pyroclasm is the exact same amount of out as before, which is to say zero. <laughs> <laughs> Crazy. That's quite the game. Yeah, that was insane. I... All right, well, so he can blow up Revoker and play Dak Faden, though. That's the line. He can steal the Dark Steel Juggernaut, but it's tapped, and he dies to the Mirror Tokens. He can steal the Mirror Token, block Juggernaut, and take two, like... But he's still dead. We need something greater than the Greatest Thief in the Multiverse here. I mean, yeah. Dark Thief is good. Thief in the Multiverse but... can steal Dark Steel Juggernaut, but it's just, it's just for the fun of it. None of these lines survive. In the words of Rich, he has uh, many non-deterministic paths to defeat here. <laughs> <laughs> many deterministic paths. Or rather, rather, deterministic paths to defeat. Oh, he can't, he can't even draw two. Can't even go fishing. Rexine Revoker. He's just showing off his last couple cards here. It's tough, and part of the, this the thing that was tough for this game for Rich also is that Chris didn't draw any of his lands that gets locked down by Saba's Web. Right, and, right, right. And Chris got Wasteland and had the double workshop, which is, you know, pretty good stroke of, of luck for Chris here. Yeah, no, it's all true. Yeah, Chris chose to go down a line that just didn't work out the way Chris's draw was put together. Rich chose to go down a line that didn't work out, given Chris's draw. Yeah, I mean, the vamp for Wasteland wins you a lot of games on the spot. But <laughs> the games it doesn't, you're down a card in a draw step for nothing, basically. Like, yeah. Chris, is, Chris was not really impacted by the Wasteland in any way. Like, maybe he wouldn't be able to play two spells in the same turn or whatever, but... Yeah, he's had, had to tap Rich, Ancient Tomb like five yeah. times, but... Had, no. had Rich had a you know, an extra vampiric tutor, then it would have been, it would have been pretty great. The unlocked token. This is the, like, hope Chris doesn't notice his life total line. 
Well, I like I like that Rich is is not conceding here. I hope Rich lets the Darkstar Juggernaut actually deliver lethal. <laughs> uh, I will only grant the victory to Darkstar Juggernaut if it is the one delivering lethal. <laughs> well, it all depends how Rich blocks. It all comes down to this. Uh... <laughs> I'm I'm calling it Darksteel Juggernaut for the win. Indestructible large artifact creature. Chris moves to four and two, all with this Terranova Shops deck. So he does get this win in the last round. He drops Rich to two and four. Rich was 2 0 at one point. He can't be feeling too happy about the way the last four weeks have gone for him. Yep. All right. Pretty interesting match. Uh, next up is my match against David Williams. So Luis is going to hang out in the booth. He's going to be joined by Chris. So I'm sure you and Chris can talk about that <laughs> match while uh, I go get set up to play Dave. Yeah. And we have Dave as a heavy favorite, too. <laughs> yeah, great. All right. See you guys shortly. <laughs>